Hello there, welcome back. Um, right, we've seen a lot of great stuff already today, interesting things, and we've got more great stuff coming up in the next few sessions. Uh, this first one is a sh pretty short session um, on sensors and proximity, so NFC and Bluetooth. Um, now, it's only a short session, which is kind of kind of tragic because there's so much interesting stuff in there, but... Um, it's the uh, theme today. It, exactly, yes. Yeah. So uh, this is a jump start. The idea is we give you a taste of how, what it's like to work with this stuff, so... Um, um, in this session, we're going to just look briefly, and I mean briefly, at look at using sensors, uh, how you how you program them. But really, what we're going to talk about for the most part is Bluetooth LE and NFC. Not actually in the order that they're shown on here. So, <laughs> uh, Bluetooth LE and uh, NFC enhancements, so of which there are many in uh, Windows Phone 8.1. So first of all, like just very briefly, really uh, looking at the different sensors and how you work with them. This is using the Windows Runtime APIs. Um, first of all, we have lots of sensors. Now, not every device will have all of those sensors. And this is a converged API. So as you can see, we've got actually the graphic there, we've got a, a tablet shown, but uh, these are available on, obviously on the phone as well. Uh, compass accelerometer, gyrometer, the orientation light sensor, and an incl inclinometer. So, you know, if you want to get real, uh, real world settings about uh, the, the way your device is tilted or oriented or being turned and or dropped, <laughs> you can find that out. Uh, there's lots of raw sensor types. Um, you can get hard, you know, raw, deep, raw readings from uh, the accelerometer, magnetometer, gyroscope. Um, but then there's also these what we call derived sensors. And uh, actually, in fact, there's not much point in saying too much about them because from a programming point of view, they're just, you know, objects that you interact with. But what, what those are is that they, uh, the derived sensors, they actually take... Um, uh, they take a, an amalgamation of raw readings from some of the more the more direct sensors, and they they do some uh, some clever mathematics. And what they what they give you is a kind of a smooth or an optimized signal, which gives you some of these other these other uh, sensor readings that uh, that are, are listed down here. But you use them all in much the same way. Um, the way you think, first of all, you have to make sure that a particular sensor is available on the device. So first thing you almost do is you call the get default method of, the, of the, any of these particular sensors. Um, they all have this, and if that device is present on the device, um, if, if the, if the uh, sensor is available and present on that device, uh, you will get an object back. And if it's not been installed by the manufacturer, then obviously that will return null. So that's essentially the first thing you must always do with any of these sensors. Uh, then when they, uh, they actually get turned on and turned off kind of automatically when you start using them. So when you hook up uh, a, a reading changed event or, uh, or you actually do a direct reading of the, of the device, that will power it up and activate it and you'll get the information you want out of it. Um, uh, and once you've set the, uh, you need to set the report interval to a non-zero value prior to registering an event handler. Um, or, or calling get current reading, and that is the trigger that will actually activate the particular hardware. Uh, so if you want to use a uh, reading changed event, then uh, you set your report interval and hook up your reading changed event handler, um, and then you will get events being fired uh, at the report interval. The report interval just is a, is a throttling device, so you don't get overwhelmed with reading. So you're saying, OK, I, I only want to get an update every 100 milliseconds, is the example here. You'll get then the event will fire, and you can read whatever data it is that that particular sensor gives you. Obviously, this is a gyrometer, which gives you back a gyrometer reading changed event args and from that you can get an angular velocity of x uh, y and z um, so uh, and obviously the different sensors have their own flavor of the reading changed event args which gives you the particular sensor readings data that you that that sensor returns um, you can obviously poll it as well so that's the other way is not using the event handler you can simply and it intervals call the get current reading method of it which gives you an instantaneous re uh, reading back from that sensor. Gives you obviously returns the same data, but it gives you more control over when, when you actually get a reading from it. And notice that bottom 
point on the slide. You still need to, even if you're only doing one reading, you've got to set a desired report interval before polling because that's the trigger that actually activates the sensor. So in order to get some sense out of it, uh, you need to do that. Um, like I said, short and sweet. I'm not going to do a demo on that because I really want to get into the almost the more interesting stuff, if you like, which is Bluetooth and NFC. Bluetooth first. Um, so we've got four Bluetooth scenarios that you, four kind of ways that you can use Bluetooth in a Windows Phone device or a Windows device. So um, first of all, we've got this app to device thing. So here we've got an external device, some kind of Bluetooth device that has been paired with your phone. Uh, and the program can enumerate the paired devices and can establish a connection to it. Uh, so it can interrogate for the services that that device offers, can connect to that service, and then communicate um, directly with that, uh, that device. There's app to app as well. And an application can communicate with another instance of itself running on a different device. So there you've got the same app has been installed on two actual devices. And one device can actually um, start searching for itself running on a nearby device. So it obviously uses the Bluetooth radios. And, uh, um, but built into the phones is the ability to, uh, to, uh, to discover if the, the app is present on the other device. Um, and it can, it will, it, when the app is running, they can communicate with each other over the Bluetooth connection. And pairing is not required for that. Now we've got two new ones in uh, Windows Phone 8.1. First of all, we've got Bluetooth RFCOM, which is often called serial port emulation. So RFCOM is a particular sort of set of standards for talking over RFCOM as if it's connected by an old fashioned uh, serial cable, except of course, it's, this is that cable replacement, which was kind of the early promise of Bluetooth was what it was gonna get rid of all these cables that you used to use to plug everything in. So RFCOM is, um, uh, you know, is, is supported. Um, and Bluetooth uh, uh, GAT to access Bluetooth LE devices. This is, uh, this is the, actually the most exciting one of all of these. So this, go through one of those in a little bit more detail. Um, app to device, like I said, you can get an enumeration of all the Bluetooth devices that have been paired, and then it can attempt to make a connection to that service. You have to understand what the protocol is that that device understands, uh, and you get, just get a stream socket object, and basically you just have to write the correct bytes for whatever protocol that device understands onto the wire um, and understand the protocol, the handshaking protocol for message exchange between, for that device. So this is kind of a very roll your own kind of solution. App to app is interesting because uh, you use this peer finder class, which um, uh, you have the apps running on two devices, and then uh, the one app can can actually start searching for an instance of itself running on a nearby device. And when it discovers it, then events fire, and they can set up a connection between them. So um, this one, the devices do not need to be paired. Um, you still need the proximity capability. These have been in since Windows Phone 8. So I'm not going to talk any more about them. If you want to find out more about those scenarios, there is a simply awesome video from the last Jumpstart series uh, with myself and Rob Tiffany talking about uh, the NFC and Bluetooth support that was in Windows Phone 8. And everything we've got, obviously, in this release builds on top of that. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through those two uh, all over again. So what's new then? RFCOM, LA, which is also called Bluetooth Smart, um, and actually the most exciting thing is some triggers. This, this is really the, the magic that allows interesting stuff to happen because it means your foreground app doesn't need to be running in order for your app to be able to interact with a Bluetooth LE device. Um, RFCOM, um, this is kind of almost for, you know, you, you could call them almost more legacy Bluetooth services, ones that understand RFCOM uh, protocols, which is this serial port profile. Um, so you can, you've got this client and server service discovery, SDP thing. So you can discover services that are available on a Bluetooth device that understands this, these things, uh, can connect to it. And uh, as the graphic there suggests, you can kind of connect the unconnected. You could have a Bluetooth system in car, for example, and use your phone, an app running on your phone, as a, as a, a kind of gateway to the cloud and, and uh, to expose interesting new scenarios to in, in communicating with that embedded hardware. And I'm not going to talk any more about that because <laughs> this is the one I really want to go and talk about. Bluetooth LE. Um, so Bluetooth LE, or Bluetooth Smart, is otherwise known as Bluetooth V4. Um, and this is, this is fairly new, but it's really 
amazingly popular. There's, it's becoming super, super uh, popular. There's loads and loads of uh, devices coming out, and it's all part of this Internet of Things uh, phenomenon. What's interesting about Bluetooth Smart, Bluetooth LE, is that uh, it's really optimized for very low power devices. So you can have a, a I've got a little device here, which is a, a, it's actually a little key fob, which I'm going to do a demo with in a moment. And it just has a little, you know, a little uh, cell battery in it, a little watch battery in it, uh, which it can run on for six months or more. Um, and the, the other thing, good thing is from the phone's point of view is that it's very easy to uh, make a Bluetooth LE connection and then drop it again. So it's very power efficient. So the, the kind of scenarios it's really good at is exactly this kind of find my keys thing where your phone is connected, you've got your keys in your pocket and the phone is, is, is got a, con a connection to it which can, it can maintain a very low power output. Um, and then as soon as you, uh, you, you put your keys down and walk off without them, uh, your app will, uh, will fire up and the, you will know that the connection has been dropped. And this making connections, dropping connections very quickly and efficiently is what it's all about. So we've got great support for GAT, which stands for Generic Attribute Profile, uh, which is, uh, we've got this Winter Windows Runtime API for GAT, uh, which allows you to interact with, with Bluetooth LE uh, devices. We need to put some stuff in the manifest when you're talking to Bluetooth LE, uh, to GAT, and actually also with um, uh, Bluetooth RFCOM has a similar kind of thing. Uh, you need to put this into the manifest. Now, I'm particularly calling this out because unlike most of the other stuff we've seen in this jumpstart, there isn't a, any designer support for this. So uh, you can't go into the, uh, the manifest designer and uh, click, check some checkboxes and fill in some values and drop down boxes and things. You have to come in and manually edit this. So you need to right click in Solution Explorer, use Open With and choose the XML text editor. And you go in and you add this in. I'll show you in a sample exactly where this goes. Now some of the data on here, the model and that, that's the identification of the uh, actual particular device. So you need to, to find out what that is or any device. And then you're looking for uh, the name is the uh, is the uh, the manufacturer's name, and then the heart rate. This is a fixed service name, uh, which is these are all controlled names by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, the Bluetooth SIG, who have uh, main, who are writing the standards for all of this sort of thing. So it, it means that all key finder Bluetooth fobs will all have the same service on it, or a heart rate monitor will all have a service called heart rate on it. So you can know you can write generic code that's going to work with devices from different uh, manufacturers. And if you don't want to use the name colon heart rate syntax, you can use this service ID colon, and then you put a, 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 a GUID uh, identification in that. So there's a little bit of stuff there you need to do. Now, a little bit of code I'm just going to show. Uh, the Bluetooth LE Health, this is an example of connecting to a, a health thermometer, a Bluetooth LE thermometer service on a, on a smart thermometer. Um, and the first thing is you will all you will always do windows.devices.enumeration.devicesinformation.find all async. Now one thing is all these devices have to have been paired with the device first. Um, so there's no kind of discovery without being paired. So that this find all async will give you back um, it could give you back a list of all the Bluetooth LE devices that have been paired with your phone. Uh, you can filter that by actually saying, I only want to know about certain devices of a certain class. So this is what this GAT device service dot get device selector from UUID, GAT service UUID's dot health thermometer is a, is a drop down, it will be given to you, is a, uh, these, this gives you the special UUID, the ID of um, a health thermometer service. So that will filter the list and just give you back any health thermometer services that you are paired with. Uh, and then you go down, reading down the slide, you connect, you get, get the GAT device service associated with that uh, thermometer service. And then you can uh, connect to it and you can get the characteristics the, uh, to read the data off the, the device. And you can hook the value changed event and you can get readings back from that uh, smart thermometer. You then write the bottom line is await thermometer characteristic dot rot write client characteristic. So what you're doing here is talking to that smart device. You're telling it, please tell me whenever the uh, uh, notify me whenever the temperature changes. So it's a two way thing going on here. The, the service allows you at a primitive level to program certain aspects of that smart device's capabilities. So this is the one where you're saying, hey, tell me when the temperature has changed. 
And in your, you then obviously have a temperature measurement changed event handler where you get some data and you would read it and the bottom method there simply converts the byte data that you get from the Bluetooth LE device into something that we can actually read. So it comes out with the, of the real number. Um, so there's some, some bit shifting you have to do to figure out the data and, and that again is all, um, uh, all this will be in the specs for the particular Bluetooth service. Um, now, all of this is nice. You, that's the programming thing from the foreground app, but where it really gets interesting is um, for, in a uh, sort of find my keys kind of scenario is um, what happens when, uh, you, you know, to connect to a device, uh, sorry, to detect when a device is disconnected or, or has reconnected and this, uh, and even when your foreground app isn't running. And that's what Bluetooth triggers is all about. Um, we've got four of them, device use trigger. So this is where the, the top two are for long running things. So the basic idea with a device use trigger is your foreground app actually launches this background task immediately uh, and that, that is maintaining the connection with the device. This is for kind of servicing the device if you like, for, for doing, you could do, use it for doing firmware updates and this kind of stuff. Um, the background task will continue even after the uh, foreground app has been suspended. It will continue running in the background, um, finish its work and it can have up to like 10 minutes to, uh, to service that device. That's a device use trigger. So uh, not quite like some of the other triggers that just start something off in the background. This is a foreground initiated background task. RF comm connection trigger is kind of similar. Again, this is for an RF comm device uh, and it may, the foreground app establishes the connection uh, and then even after the foreground app has suspended the background task, uh, which has been on an RF comm connection trigger, will carry on uh, uh, maintaining that connection with that RF comm device. The other two are, are more traditional triggers, if you like. A device connection change this is when, this is the one you'll use more often than not, is when a Bluetooth device becomes connected or disconnected. And this will fire up a background task and this is the one which will raise an alert when you've left your keys behind or, or, uh, or something like that. And likewise, a GAT characteristic notification trigger. Um, this is um, something where you've, made, you've got a Bluetooth LE connection, uh, you're paired with a Bluetooth LE device and you've sent a, a ca right characteristic to it to say, hey, tell me when such and such a uh, characteristic has changed, whatever that particular service is all about. That health thermometer was a good example. Uh, and that says, okay, fire, whenever that, that characteristic change, uh, send me a message and that will fire up the background task running on your phone to handle that message um, and you can, then your app can take action, put an alert up or whatever, update a tile or, or whatever it needs to do. Okay, so that's that. Um, this is how you do an RF comm connection trigger. Um, you set up, you new up the device and then thereafter uh, you need to have this Bluetooth service UI, UIDs. These are all fixed by the, uh, the uh, Bluetooth SIG. Um, you then uh, can uh, you, you program up your RF comm connection trigger and as with all the other background tasks, you have a background task builder, set the trigger to it and now I'm going to show you a cool demo. So um, I've got here I have got here a, uh, a locked PC. Uh, oh. Get that bit right. There we go. Okay. Now I've got an app which is called Keep the Keys. Um, and it's got a foreground app, Keep the Keys. Uh, we've got a background task which has got a key fob task in it. Uh, I've got some, um, I've got some breakpoints in here, so actually I'll talk it through as we run it. And then I've just got some common stuff which is used by both the uh, background task and the uh, foreground task. The most important here is this key fob class, which stores the state of the, of the, the key fob object. Um, let's, um, I've also got here a device that's gone off. Why has my device gone off? Uh, top. The power button's on the top. Oh, okay. And then it says, allow screen projection. Okay, there we go. Uh, I, that's right, I was trying to take a picture. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as you can see, it is, uh, Bluetooth is on, and I'm paired with this VTAG, which actually is that little, uh, this, this little key tag I, I showed you just before. Um, and we can, um, uh, first of all, I'm going I'm to start running the app. Actually, I wonder if we can do some clever stuff here.
uh, let's run the app um, and it's going to uh, start up on my device and uh, here we are keep the keys and the first thing that will happen is we will hit a breakpoint which this is where we're going to enumerate and find all the paired devices so uh, we go and get device, we do device information, find all async. I want to get all Bluetooth LE devices. So we're finding out who we're paired with. Um, and then we're, we're just going to go and find that. And we're looking, we get our ID async and we know we're going to new up our state object, a key fob, fob object from this. Um, and uh, we're, uh, with, then the code just below that is all about managing our background tasks. Because we need, you need code in here as well to uh, remove uh, registration background tasks for devices that you're not paired with anymore. So you need a bit of housekeeping code in there. So I'm just going to let that run, and you can see that on the screen I've got now that device is um, is connect is is listed in it. I'm going to tap on uh, VTag on this screen, and it's going to switch to um, uh, another. Uh, another screen on here. This is where we can configure, do the configuration for our um, uh, our uh, actual our device. So first of all, I'm going to tap, and whenever you change anything on this screen, because this is data bound to that key fob object, it's going to run some code in the key fob object, which will register background tasks. Um, at the moment, I've got nothing registered. Um, I'm going to create a phone notification on link loss. Um, and, if, and then the other one is set device alert level on link loss. So what we're doing, the two things here, the top checkbox is for uh, setting an alert on the uh, phone and the bottom one is for setting an alert on the device because both are programmable. So I'm going to first of all set the one on the phone. We hit the, uh, the, the breakpoint in our key fob class and this is going to go down and say, okay, um, and this is, uh, ha have we asked for an uh, alert on the device? No, we haven't, because what we've just done is last for an alert on the phone. So then we go, if, the, if we got an alert on the phone, well, then we new up a device connection change trigger, um, and we set maintain connection equals true, um, have our background task builder, and at this point I'm going to let it run, and it's now, we've now got a background task which will uh, raise an alert when the phone, uh, when, uh, on the phone when the link is lost. Um, and before I do that, I'm, going to, I'm now going to... Um, go uh, over to my Bluetooth settings. I'm going to come back to this in a moment. Um, go to settings, uh, to settings, to Bluetooth. And make sure we're connecting to that device. And uh, we're pausing. And we're connected. There we go. Um, and uh, the device is just bl flashing a little light at me to say it is. And I'm now going to disconnect it again. So we should get the background task. Oh, look, we just actually hit a break point. We are now connected. So every time we connect, um, we also hit in, the, in this uh, key fob. We're in the background task. Um, and uh, we, in the background task, we say, um, if, we got a, if the device alerts on phone, then we would have raised alert, but we're not disconnected. The logic was if we disconnected. So run that, and now I'm going to disconnect it again by tapping on VTAG in the Bluetooth setting. And actually, my device is already programmed, so... Um, uh, and then we're stuck in the uh, keep the keys again in the, blue, the background task, and let it run. And now I've got the alert has been raised. My background task has run on the phone and has told us that tag has been uh, disconnected. Um, Back to uh, my app. And I'm going to let that run. This is now going to program the device. Device VTAG is out of range. Hang on. Let's, oh, let's kill that breakpoint. It's annoying. <laughs> Go. Just do what I say. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Set that. Set a high alert onto on the uh, on the device, um, and what I was going to do is get Matthias to walk out of here with uh, the device. Um, but um, uh, let's not do that. Uh, you could take the battery out for me if you like. That would be the same as the the key fob going away. Okay. okay. So Matthias is just struggling with a coin over there. Um, um, I'll disable all my breakpoints, so just we'll just let it let it run, um, and 
actually, let's 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 just kill the app. And uh, is there a special way to pull this battery out? Oh, you need to have a, a, a pen or something to dig it out, or uh, um, let me see. Uh, so we're connected at the moment, and. Uh, Okay, I think I got something. He's, he's found a sharp object to prize the pen. There we go, the battery's gone. So in a minute, the device will uh, uh, will effectively go away. And uh, here we are, it's gone. And we should have all sorts of alarms will go off. Now our, our phone has said, yeah, the phone, the keys have been taken away. So no, it's, um, I hope that shows the, the power of what uh, what we've got there with Bluetooth LE and background tasks to, to build this kind of solution. Um, right, and I'm just going to talk a little bit again about uh, uh, near-field communications, NFC. So this is for very, very close connections. You can tap the device to, uh, to the uh, uh, tap the device to a very to a NFC chip or to another phone, and you can exchange information. Um, and it's assumed that this data transfer is intentional, so there's not normally any authentication because it's it's you know physical tapping them together. So you can go to un unpowered things. There's lots of scenarios that we support. Um, you can ta exchange send short messages between uh, devices. Um, you can use NFC to bootstrap higher capacity connections. So you, you tap initially and then that sets up a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth connection for doing faster comms. Um, you can emulate smart cards. So you can use it for uh, transit passes um, and uh, for, or for doing key, getting through uh, smart gates with, uh, you know, uh, as a, like a smart card. Um, you can read and write to NFC tags or smart cards. Um, uh, you can tap to share. That's all built into one of the sharing things to share pictures, contact cards, URLs and videos. Um, and also it's available for secure NFC payment. Uh, that's a bit of a specialist field, so we're not, certainly not going to talk much about that some more. Um, and we've been able to do short message exchange and that ta uh, tapping to initiate higher bandwidth connections uh, since Windows Phone 8. And yet again, in the same uh, proximity and Bluetooth session from the last, uh, blue, uh, last uh, jump start, you can find out a bit more about those. But what's interesting is new in, in 8.1 for Windows Phone NFC. Uh, first of all, when you, and whenever you tap to read, you always have this user confirmation thing, uh, which kind of got a bit tiresome after a while. So we've got, now got this new trusted applications concept, which is really good. Uh, so that once the first time you tap something to uh, another device, it will say it will, you still have to confirm it. But it, the, on subsequent occasions, uh, a, a, a checkbox will come up to say, oh, yeah, actually, I'm, I trust this device. And thereafter, you won't be prompted anymore. We've also got a whole overhaul of the, uh, the UICC, which is actually the SIM card, the SIM card based card emulation. So the smart, the secure element inside a SIM card, which enables all of these, um, these uh, smart card scenarios, a whole overhaul of the APIs for programming that. We've got lots of new card tag features and a whole new NFC driver model, which ha does have a side effect that some of these features are only going to be available on hardware that's going to be new phones that are going to be available later in the year. Um, this is just a, a kind of recap of how you might use NFC to launch an app. This is an example of a short message exchange. You call proximitydevice.getdefault to find out if you've got an NFC uh, uh, chip in your phone. If it's not null, then you can sort of format a special format string and then call at the bottom publish binary message. And there are other publish uh, APIs as well, publish uh, string message and, and that sort of thing. So particular formats like launch app colon write tag is a way you can get an app to launch on another device, such as a tablet or another phone. So you can tap it and launch it on the, the app on another phone. Uh, this is that user experience, the app I, apps I trust thing. So, you know, whenever you tap uh, a device together to, to initiate something over NFC, the first time, like I said, you'll have to get that um, confirmation thing. But thereafter, you get this, I trust this app, don't show this message again checkbox. And if you check that, then it's a trusted app, and you can see all the apps you trust in the uh, NFC settings in the control panel, and obviously you can remove them from there as well. Um, that's, uh, that's a nice um, user experience improvement, and everybody will get that. But now there's some of these things that um, are only going to be on the newer hardware because they need a new NFC chipset and a new driver. Uh, first of all, uh, there is um, when you uh, write tags, uh, um, 
onto a, uh, you're writing onto a, a, a smart tag, uh, they uh, used to have to be a certain form. You can now format them automatically. So that's a real nice NDEF formatting automatic is real enhancement. Um, there's particular tags that are supported for there that are listed. Um, you can also write and then set it as read only. So that was something we couldn't do before. So it's a write once uh, and, and scenario. So uh, then it'll lock the tag. And again, there's certain tags uh, that will support that feature. Uh, but then we've also got this low-level API for a raw access to smart cards, which it opens up all sorts of interesting scenarios, such as um, reading uh, a transit card, uh, the balance on it, and, uh, or adding funds to a debit card, and managing loyalty cards. So this read-write thing with all of these smart cards that are starting to become uh, very popular for use by various consumers. Um, and I've got a quick demo of doing that. Um, I've got a new device connected now, which is a, um, which, oh, hit the wrong button, sorry, which I'm just trying to get up on the, uh, ah, this is a prototype, engineering prototype, and I would suggest they put the buttons in the wrong place. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this has got the new um, NFC hardware in it, and it's an engineering prototype which the team have lent me. Thank you very much for that. Uh -huh. uh, let's go and uh, open the particular project. Um, now this is a, um, is gonna, we're going to read, I've got here a German uh, debit card. It's, a, it's obviously a sample card. It's just a regular, regular bank card, um, but it's got a smart, uh, smart card. It's an NFC enabled card. Um, uh, so I'm going to actually uh, run an app here that uh, is on the de on this device, which um, the first thing it will do is it goes and finds out if we got any uh, smart card readers on it. So it looks for we got smart card reader got dot get device selector to find out if we've got the smart card reader kind of NFC on it, and if we have, then we're in good shape. Um, and uh, the app will light into life. There we go. So we've got, um, we've got the right kind of hardware on it, and we've got no readings off it in the moment. So then I'm going to get this card and just hold it by the back of the phone, and you might be able to hear that. And now we've got this card added event handler. So um, I'm going to step into this where we can communicate with that card. So we, we actually connect a sync to our smart card. We then new up a data reader, and then we're going to go off and for each in this Jiroga read info se sequence, what is that? Let's just have a peek at the uh, definition of that. This is a, um, a, a list of NFC command sequences, which if we scroll down a little bit, it's just a list of bytes. These are the commands that this particular card understands. Uh, so we're going to send each of these commands in turn, and it's going to return the card details, amount details, transaction details, so information from this card. So uh, what we'll do is, we'll, for each of those, we will uh, send that, we'll write the bytes uh, of the data reader of that command, and then we'll transmit that to the device, and then we'll get the response from the card. And all that get response from card is doing is, um, uh, is using a, yet a, a data reader to read the uh, byte response from that card. Uh, so I'm going to let that run, and over on the side there, you can see we've got the information from the debit card. Card ID, we've read off it, and the exp expiration date, and um, loaded amount, and all sorts of information we've read off this debit card. And if I now remove the card again, the card removed event handler will fire, which actually just clears the display. So, nice and easy. And remove it again. Very simple, and it's quick and easy, and, uh, uh, and a nice way of interacting with smart cards. Uh, we've got also loads of great card emulation features, so uh, we can actually, in, in the future, um, your phone will be able to act as like as a mobile wallet for payments, and there's a whole new, there's a lot of standards and a lot of bodies who are involved in this, so it's kind of difficult to create these solutions because of all of the banks and the payment companies and, and the mobile operators and, and everything. Uh, at least from our side of things, we've made it much easier to create the solution. So uh, it's now, you don't need any, you used to need fancy drivers and special SDKs. Now all you need is the standard SDK, um, and, uh, uh, and uh, e so it's easy app development. Um, there's still lots of uh, other, other companies that have to get involved in getting a solution out there. All right, so that's, um, that's a 
whirlwind run through a bit of Bluetooth LE and a bit of NFC, but I hope you're as excited as I am about what's coming up with this, particularly Bluetooth LE, cool stuff you can do with that. Uh, we're gonna take a, a short five minute break, a short five minute break, or even a long five minute break, a break, and then we'll be right back with uh, contacts and calendars. Oh, and, and email with attachments, yeah. Woo! Thank you.